Okay, so uh, the observer, I call it the observer tool. So the way to recognize the observer is uh, the observer tool is 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 letting go. The observer is letting go. You could say that is like in this moment is there currently identification with anything that is limited or transitory. Now, when I say the word identification, uh, that could mean a few different. I'll give you a few different examples. Like identification could mean hooking in, or or in a more long-winded way, it could mean that um, there is something in consciousness which seems to be meaningful and interesting. Yeah. So if any of those things are going on, then what happens is it seems like uh, a hooking in or identification occurs, and then the experience of the self starts to contract or starts to become uh, fixated, the sense of self starts to constrict and get lost in, in that which is hooked into or that which is limited or transitory in nature. And there's a, a loss of the experience of that which is beyond uh, the experience of, of limitation. So, uh, traditionally called self-inquiry, uh, by with Ramana Maharishi, is classically called, is the starting to inquire is to what am I? What am I? So, am I hooking into? So, and this is, has to be a deeply intimate thing. Uh, so, and I always uh, like to because I think it's just very very good to start off. I will use something. Uh, no. Can I use something different in a mug? I can use a, I can use a pen today. So it, it's also good to just check, you know, with, uh, with an object which is meaningless. You know, when you check, if, if I hold up a meaningless object, or if you look at a meaningless object in the room, like I'm holding up a pen, and, and observe it, there is, uh, and I ask the question, is anyone in this room a pen? Like, nod your head yes if anyone's a pen in this room. No one's nodding their head, so no one's a pen. So that means that there is detached observation and there is clarity, there is 100% clarity that the pen is not what you are. There's no enmeshment with the pen, there's no confusion that anyone is a pen. So there is a witnessing of the pen and uh, there absolutely, there's also space. There's a seeming witness of this, uh, the, I can even move the pen, still not me, I'm not the pen. Even if it passes across, there is a there is a pure witnessing, or a detached witnessing that this is like a, a pen going past. Just like if suddenly there was a blue sky and a black cloud suddenly wafted past, in a blue sky, uh, and there was witnessing of that black cloud, you know there wouldn't be any confusion. Ah, black cloud, I am the black cloud. So that's the thing. So. So the, the most crucial one, I think, to start with, but it can be different, because different people have different things they, they, that are meaningful to them and therefore become uh, hooked into or identified and then are, it's like unconsciously uh, placed as self, you know. But one of the, I think, one of the major addictions is thinking. Uh, so it's a, it's a very, very strong, uh, strong addiction to thoughts. So I think it's always a good one to start with. I mean, some people, I mean, if you're having chronic pain, it might be uh, good to start with that. But um, thinking, so thoughts, you know, thoughts come and go, you know. Thoughts, um, everyone's experience times, maybe you can't remember, because thought, there can be defense mechanisms within the thinking. But there have been times when there have been less thoughts, there have been times when there have been more thoughts passing by. There might have even been times when there's been no thoughts, it's just been the present moment, the, the, the timeless now, you know. And uh, so it's like the stunningness of, I don't know, it could be a lake or a tree or whatever it is in a park or some water or a water on a canal. It's like the, the thoughts go silent and there's pure presence and there's no identification with any story. 
And then sometimes there can be times when there can be lots of thoughts going by or a few thoughts going by. But that which observes thoughts or the absence of thoughts, is that, you know, is the observer of thoughts here? Is, and that has to be a spiritual experience. Now, the, the thinking is so important because the witnesser of thoughts I'm, I'm not saying, like, can you think about this, you know, this isn't, or can you visualize this? Because if you put, you allow your, if you allow interest or identification to go to the field of thoughts, so let me think about this and make a picture about this, but there is that which observes all the mechanisms of the mind. <clears throat> so is there, a, is, there a, is there a witnessing and observing of that which, which observes thoughts? And if there isn't, or if there is a, a semi-detached observer which hasn't got clear detachment, so that there's absolute clarity that th thoughts pass by but it's got nothing to do with what myself, then go to the observer of that observer. And if that observer is confused that thoughts might be what you are, then go to the observer of that observer. Now, so that's the first one, I think, you know, the, but you know, another one, uh, that's fun to do, where it will be different for each individual depending on what you're hooking into. So whatever you're hooking into most, be the observer of that. See if there's an observing. I think another fun one to do is, is there any sense of the body at this moment? You know, yeah, is the experience in this moment, I am, I, you know, I experience my body. If there is, then often the experience of the body, it's like it's in a location and it has limits. Oh yeah, you know, I can, I, I can sort of, I'm aware that the body is in the room in this location and it's got this shape. But you know, like if I hold a pen, the observer of the shape, is the observer of the shape the shape? <clears throat> so what's observing the shape of the pen? The observer of the pen is not stuck in the pen because it's able to witness the limits of the pen. So if there's, a, <clears throat> if there's some kind of residual hooking into the body, <coughs> what's observing the limits of the body? <coughs> so is that which is observing the body, the observer of the body, is that a body? So you have, this has to be a, an experiential spiritual experience. But that which is witnessing the body, is it the body? Now that might be, that might be the next thing to do, but if there's aches or pains in the body, uh, then what's, you know, Pain comes and goes and changes in intensity. So that which is observing pain coming and going or changing intensity is the observer of pain in pain. Or is the observer, and if the observer is in pain, then what is the observer of that observer in pain? The other one is, is time. This is a real uh, good one to do. Is there a sense of time? A lot of people, especially in the West, are not aware that there's something in consciousness that's tracking time. It's like counting seconds in the background. Or is it very much in the future? Of the if there's a sense of time, be aware of a sense of time. And what, but that which observes time, the observer of time, is the observer of time in time? Now, if the observer of time is interested in the sense of time, then go to the, uh, go to the detached or uninterested observer of time. And, in the, and does that observer, does any time exist in that which witnesses time without interest? So if there's any senses or feelings in the body, well, feelings come and go. Let, let's say, one is peaceful in the morning, and then suddenly there is like fear in the stomach. So, if there was no fear in the morning, and then now there's fear and not a fear in the stomach, that which observed the fear arise, is the, the observer of fear in the stomach, is that in fear? The observer that watches a cloud of fear arise, is it in fear? So these are spiritual these are experiential. None of this I was talking to anyone's head. So as you go into this, now after you've done the big ones, then there should be a check, a self-inquiry check. Now, 
what am I now? If I'm that which observes thoughts, if there's an let, put it correctly, if there's now obs clear observing of thoughts, there's clear observing or witnessing of the body, there's clear witnessing of all sensations that might be in the body, there's witnessing of time. When there's pure witnessing, when there's detached witnessing, these things fade away. It's only out of interest and hooking in that they start to experience the self. Now, as you get here, is there any sense of being limited or contracted? And whatever it is, if there's any sense of limitation and contraction, what's observing that, where you currently are at? Is that which is observing what you now are, is that in any way contracted or limited? Does it have any texture? Does it have a boundary? But what's observing the boundary? Is it fluctuating? But what observes fluctuation? Is that which observes fluctuation or change? Is that fluctuating or changing? So as you go deeper, just keep going deeper until, and recognize that as you go deeper into the observer, these things disappear. Like when something is, when there's no interest in something, when there's zero hooking into anything, it disappears. To the extent that something is finding it interesting or wants to hook in or finding it special, then to that extent it seems to exist. So we're going to have um, about two or three minutes in silence now, just to silently rest in that which is eternal, or just keep practicing any form of limitation, go deeper into that which is witnessing that.